You know, every Saturday night I'm over at the Belly Room in um, the Comedy Store on Sunset, and uh, Saturday nights is, is a lot of fun. I'm, I'm only there just one day a week. I, I used to be there like five days a week, but I, I just decided I'm writing my book now. My book will be coming out, The Boy with the Betty Grable Legs. Do you like it? Well, anyway, I, uh, I'm doing my uh, presenting, actually presenting a lot of comedians at the Comedy Store, and uh, I've been doing that for so many years, and uh, this time I brought you two of my favorites. Uh, a lady who is, matter of fact, who's a debutante from New Orleans. A debutante, Pamela Yeager? That's right. A I real debutante. I was. It was uh, kind of an interesting thing. You know, I had this little presentation of society. It was uh, a lot like a dog show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> is a debutante? I know what, you know, tell me. It's, it's, well, it's when a girl reaches a certain age, it's kind of to announce that it's time for her to get married. Uh -huh. And it's, uh, they call it a coming out party. I see. So I had a coming out party, which is kind of a lot like being gay, but my dress wasn't as nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's very funny. Yeah. At, a, at what age a debutante becomes a debutante? It depends on the area of where you're from. I was from New Orleans. We were. I was about 21 when uh -huh. it happened. That's well, you yeah. were a late debutante. I was, it was kind usually of they're like 18, 17 usually, aren't they? Yeah, kind of not in New Orleans. Though. Not New in New Orleans? Orleans around Why 20. New Orleans is so strict? Well, no, I Where you have all this Bourbon Street sex persona lady you, of girls in New Orleans, lady, you, you were in the other track of New Orleans. Yeah. So tell me about that but other track. But still, I was, uh, you know, for I guess where I'm from, we don't really have debutantes there, we have debut tramps. Debut you know? Oh, <laughs> come on. Okay. <laughs> we're very sassy uh -huh, there. We uh -huh. like to, you know, drink and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, we, uh, we start uh, a little bit uh, later because we do so many other parties mm -hmm, earlier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You went to a, black, a Catholic school at Sacramento. Tell me about the Sacred Heart. A college? Sacred Heart, or yeah. A, a college or school? High I school. went to high school. High school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A girls, school. all girls academy? Yeah. Fun, and fun, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. Let me tell you something. You, mo you left uh, New Orleans, and then you moved to New York. You tried something in New York. What was it you went to New York for? You uh, fame and fortune. No, I went there to finish up school. You went to school. school. Yeah. You went to Sarah Lawrence's college. Right. Girls' school. Sarah Lawrence. Girls' well. school. Tell me about that mink coat of yours. <laughs> I, heard, I heard about that famous mink coat your mother bought you. That's right. And you were wearing this mink coat all over Sarah Lawrence's college. Well, Go. it's the only coat that I had, Skippy. That's the reason why I was wearing it. Uh-huh. So, you know, I mean, and I was, you know, my mother thought since I was moving to the north that I would probably freeze if I didn't have a fur coat uh -huh. on. What did the kids thought of you because they were going down to get other uh, kind of clothes in the village or something. Right. Well, so. uh, they, they, you know, they. I was also captain of the equestrian team. Oh, oh, you ride so. horses. You ride yeah. horses. Well. Ooh, you're a rider. Yes. How oh, interesting. They didn't have many men there to date, so, uh -huh. I, you know. How long have you been riding horses? Uh, since I was about 12. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. New Orleans, yeah, they do have horses out there, don't they? Absolutely. And you became a page working for NBC. Yeah. In New York City, David Letterman shows and all those kind of people. You sound like Carol Burnett to me. Yeah, did she do that too? She certainly oh, did. Oh, that's right. Well, go ahead, tell and me. And I that. and I actually met her, and that was a great honor. Mm -hmm. That was uh, I've met a lot of good people there. Uh, I was Steve Martin's assistant for the 15th anniversary show. Really? And I used to give the tours of NBC for uh -huh. the studios and. When I wasn't giving the tours, they let me work on some of the shows. I did crowd warm up, and I got to be on Saturday Night Live a few mm. times. Oh, great! You did Saturday Night. Yep. How was it? That you was great. It was great. And really? Dana Carvey was very nice. He used to chat with me. He's about my friend. I love him. Yeah. He's very funny. So that I was like nice. him and Martin Short. I love Martin Short. Oh yeah. Yeah, Martin Short is very funny. Tell me about the comedy. As who gave you the idea? What what made it Lawrence Sarah Lawrence's or back in as being a debutante? What decided to become a comedian? Well, I was always the kind of funny person, I guess. You know, oh, really? growing up, yeah. Uh -huh. I used to get in trouble uh, with the nuns. I used to imitate the nuns before school. Did you really? Yeah. Like what? <laughs> Give me an example. <laughs> like dress up like the nuns, and well, I used to talk about the fact that uh, you know I was a late bloomer. Like all the other girls would be sitting outside waiting for their boyfriends to pick them up after school, and I'd be sitting outside waiting for my breasts to show up. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> kind of a late uh, yeah. <laughs> You did catch an, uh, catch an uh, Rising Star. What was your very first comedy live performance in New York? 
in New York was at the comic strip. It was the comic strip. Yeah. Tell me and about Alan that. And Alan Combs brought me up on stage. I was actually an audience member. Uh -huh. And he started talking to me in the crowd and said, so what do you want to do when you get out of Sarah Lawrence College? And I said, I want to be a comedian. Because, mm -hmm. well, why don't you come up uh -huh. and tell a few jokes? Well, I already had a few minutes for my act. I right, already had right, some. right. So I came up and did, and I, and I killed. So. Sarah Lawrence, did you do anything at the school? Yeah. For the girls? Mm -hmm. I was in some sketch groups and improv groups, and I also used to organize some comedy shows on campus. Uh, what's House Party? What's that about, House Parties? That was like a home show, and uh, like the home show, Steve Ducey used to host it. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. I used to do crowd warm-up for them. And Mix Nuts? Tell me about that. That is, that's around here, isn't it? That's, Mix yeah. Nuts, the Laugh Factory, and the Comedy Store. You work at all. I work at all of them. The Laugh Factory for Jamie. He started with me, you know. When he first arrived from Israel, Jamie started with me at the... Hyatt on Sunset, mm -hmm. and he decided to be a manager of a, a zone club. Right. And that's where he bought this little place on Laurel in Sunset, and it became very, very popular. It's doing very well. La High. It's La High Flamme Blue. Tell me about La High Flamme Blue. Is that correct? Ha La High. Tell La me. La High Flamme Blue. Like, yeah. yeah um, where are you from originally? Not just West South Africa, but where? Monrovia, Liberia. Monrovia, Liberia. Tell yeah. me about Monrovia, Liberia. Living there, what was it like? Uh, it was very nice in those days before we had a, had a civil war. Uh, <laughs> it was after I left, but uh, right. growing up in Monrovia, I, uh, I lived in Monrovia and I went to school in a boarding home school, Catholic boarding home school in Sierra Leone, which is a neighboring you country. You went to another, uh, both of you went to a Catholic school. Isn't yeah, that I interesting? Was, I was being groomed for the Catholic priesthood. You were going to become a priest? Yes. You are going to uh, sit there and tell me you were going to become a priest line? Yes, I sure oh, was. Oh, I think that's wonderful. I felt godly in those days. I felt like I carried the Holy Spirit on my back. Uh -huh. that's, that's how I felt. You know, uh -huh. I could just feel a tremendous amount of uh, religious... Uh, uh, just sanctification. It's just like I was mm -hmm. I was supposed to be a priest, the way I carried myself in those days. Uh-huh. But like growing up as a boy, as growing up as a boy, difficult for you looking back now? Was it difficult? No, it was very, very nice. Very simple because... Uh, I like the word you just used. Very simple. It was very That's simple. That's which Americans would only use that word a little more. Living simple. Simplicity is the only key to life. Go ahead, Lahai. And, and, and it was so simple because uh, we, we played around and there was, we walked bare feet and sometimes we had a shoes to wear here and there and, and most of the time, every now and then, we went to the villages and we saw people wearing loincloth cloth and, and that was uh, simple and people, people didn't have a whole lot to, to do or look forward to it, so uh -huh. that kept everything very simple. Uh -huh. you, you couldn't get jealous of anybody because everybody was Even your conversation, even your playing with people. All of it was very simple. Little very boys simple. Am I right? Yes. Isn't Hello, goodbye, uh -huh. see you later, and uh, play a lot of soccer around, and, and uh, not a whole lot to do besides just being uh, little boys. Now, how did you become a comedian after all this simplicity? What made you decide to come to America? I didn't actually decide to be a comedian. It just oh, everything happened by mistake. I, but I, everything is a mistake? Well, I, to tell you the truth, because I didn't know that telling jokes was being translated as a comedian. As if a you, comic, yeah. If you tell a joke, then people saw you as a funny as person. As a funny person, yeah. And, and for me, it still hasn't even registered yet. I'm, 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 I think I'm just reacting to things that I, uh -huh. that, I have, that I keep experiencing in America, and I just uh -huh. keep giving them my own personal outlook on things that I, I've experienced. Uh -huh. But to say I came to America to be a comedian, it's, the, it's an understatement, because I am a single parent, and that's my role right now, and that's what I've done for a long time since, uh -huh. since I have. Uh, You're using that word single parent. You have a child. Is that what you mean? Yes, I do have you a have child. And, and for me, that's uh, it's my number one goal to make sure my son is successful at whatever he's, he plans to do. And, uh -huh. and I, I see a lot of children in America that uh, uh, go through all kinds of experiences. And I want to make sure my son doesn't experience the dark side of life in America because it's a beautiful country. There's so much opportunities out there, but you don't have somebody to steer you towards some of these opportunities, you're going to lose right, out on right, it. Right, right, right. Lahai. Yes. You was in New York City, and she worked the club, that beautiful place, uh, uh, the David Letterman Show. Oh, yes. One of my favorite people. So you brought a I. clip 
from the show, he did something around the trips around the comics around the world, international. I would love my audience to see that clip right now. It's a very, very interesting clip from the David Letterman show. Let's see it, okay? Night, and in addition to that, it's comedy from around the world. Once again, all the way from Liberia, please welcome Lahai Fanbula. <laughs> I picture a barman. Where I fall, I love your ten million Jaffe. Ata. Bike up, Jamo. Yeah, you see, uh, most people in Africa live on the plains in huts. Most Americans would think it's that bad. It's not that bad. With no roads, you have, with no address, you get no bills. <laughs> but then again, we don't get anything from Ed oh, McMahon. <laughs> Speaking of Ed, he just got a letter from his ex-wife's lawyer the other day with his own picture on it. And he said, you may have already lost $10 million. <laughs> Another hard decision for the judges. Let's see what it is. From Liberia, Lahai Kambula. Lahai, congratulations. When you like to go to this, you won. Which was the? Uh, what, this was the international one, or yes, just, it yes. was the international one. Oh, that was great. Oh, it was very fabulous. I met Ed, and he's a very nice man. And, uh huh. Uh, Working on the David Letterman show, you've done it many times though since since then. No, I've just done it once. Only only once. Only once. Really, I thought you did it re more times than that. Well, no, they repeat they repeated my show about three other times on the uh, David Letterman I see. show. Now your material, it's very truthful, it's very honest. Everything is honest about you, and also your stuff too is very very honest, both of you. But you walk out there and you tell the truth about your country, about you, and you make it very funny. The audience just loves you. I mean. Tell me about your s material. Do you write it, or it just comes natural for you? No, I wrote it. I wrote this material. Uh, I, when I first came here, and when I first started going on a comedy stage, the only reason I kept going back to a comedy club was because of the applause. As a black person in America, I couldn't reconcile the fact that there was so, so much discrimination against black people, yet and still, I go to a comedy club, and people clap for me. And, and they love you. And they love me, and that really confused me. And that's the only reason why I kept going back. And I've always been so going So you're still back. confused about that? I'm still confused about it every day. I, I don't know why they clap. You I, really? I, I really don't know why they keep clapping. And so when I go to sleep, I hear the clack, 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 clack. Yeah. And so I go back again the next day, because uh, it's just it just feels good for people to be clapping for you when, when, you, when people are naturally staring at you and then you know you go somewhere they're gonna clap for you so I always want to go where they're gonna clap for so me. So you feel much better in this country and in your country? Yes, uh, I like being in America because uh, now that I have kids and, I, and I've done the things I've done uh, and, and being America being the country it is, who don't want to be in America? Who don't want to be in America? Lahai, what have you done? Tell me, you said you've done. What do you really want, Lahai? What do I You mean? are in Hollywood, California, right? Yes. Now. There's acting. There's possibility. There's a lot of things open for you. At the Comedy Store, there are people there seeing you constantly. Same as you. I mean, are, you have an agent. You, yes. you work around. You do things. You do. Matter of fact, you do commercials. Mm -hmm. You're an actress. Mm -hmm. So has it been good for you since you've been back here? Yes. You've been here two years now? Two since years. New York? Uh -huh. Do you miss New York? I do a little bit, you know. Ah, New York is so lively, though. And yeah. It's such good. The audiences are so different there than here. I find it's better for me here. I I've really grown really? a lot here. Why is that? Uh, Why you, for what I want to do, I want to do more television and some film and things like that. And so I have a uh, more of a a bigger audience for that. There's uh -huh. like casting directors in the audience, and in New York there was, you know. What's the joy for you, as as an actress or as a comedian? What's the joy? I love making people happy. Uh -huh. I really do. I do mean, it's really? as simple as that. And I, uh, you know, whether it's helping people out in volunteer work or getting up on stage and telling a joke, uh -huh. I really like doing and that. And if you weren't an act, an actress or a comedian, mm -hmm. you know, from a debutante from Lawrence, uh, Sarah Lawrence, what would you, what would you have done? 
Huh. I would have been married, sitting by the country club, <laughs> swimming pool, <laughs> drinking gin and tonics. Really? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Are you having a good time here in Lahai in America right now? You say you are. You're yes, having a good time. I, I am having what a good time. What would you time. like to see yourself, say, a few years from now? You, I know you have your son in high school. What would you like to see yourself down in five years from now? Where would like Lahai? Bamboo. Now that I know what I know, yeah. I like to be on a sitcom, to tell you the That's truth. That's right. See, now <laughs> they all come to America and they <laughs> get right. wise all of a sudden, right? Now that I know what I know, I mean, because I, I like to help myself. Uh -huh. you know, and, Have you been out trying to get uh, people to see you and read for them? and? Because oh, you're no, a wonderful I, style. You have your I, own I, I don't have no agent. And, uh, you I'm, don't I'm, have an agent? No, I'm trying to secure one, but I don't know how to go about doing it. it all I know is to go up on stage and it'd be funny. Hopefully somebody will come to me and say, you know I got something for you, and that's about it. But uh, trying to pursue an agent, I don't even know what to say to Well, them. you've got the right place, the Comedy Store, both of you. The Comedy yeah. Store is the place in town to be seen, where people do come, and talent agents and casting, and, and a lot of sitcom women are there looking for people. Right. And you never know. That's where Jim Carrey, that's where Roseanne, all of them, they started there. Oh, it's you know, good to that's know. The belly room is the place, and you're in the belly room every Saturday night, right? Yes, uh, we love it there. We love this. What makes life very important for Lahai right now? I know you have your son, you've got your career, but there's got to be more than just that. You left this beautiful country of yours. That is a beautiful country. Yes, it is. It is. It was just beautiful. What uh, is it? What is the most important thing in life for you right now? Are you, are you getting your citizenship or what? what yes, I'm getting my citizenship in about a couple of months from now. And uh, hopefully I can become a citizen and, and continue to, to live in America. Because uh, I, I don't think I'm going to go back to Africa roasting rats anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's not going to... As a child happen. living in Africa, growing up, animals, all kinds of animals. I get asked a lot of questions. People sometimes think I'm a runner because I'm skinny. Sometimes I get asked, oh, did you used to live with the lions and the giraffes? And sometimes <laughs> people look at me like, boy, you look like the guy from the movie, The Ghost Must Be Crazy. Uh -huh. None of those things, none of the above. I, I, I just happen to be an African guy uh -huh. on stage, and people read a lot into who I am. And I'm just a skinny old guy from Africa trying to make people laugh. If, you know, that's all I do. And, but right now, what's really important to me is the fact that uh, I really want to help my son to be somebody in the process, I, that, that's going to make me feel good. That's mm -hmm. what we're going to really make me feel the best I've ever felt. What comedian has inspired me? Baha'i? Oh, believe me, if I, if I really tell you the truth, I mean, if I say what, what I really know, the comedian that I really know and like, not necessarily like, but really made an impact on me was Johnny Carson. Because uh -huh. when I first came to America, I didn't know Johnny Carson was a comedian. I saw him one night talking about President Carter, and I just come back. I just come from Africa, and I thought Johnny Carson was going to get killed the next day, because uh -huh. I never seen somebody talking about the president of his country. And this country is very free, isn't it? Yes, yeah. Yeah. very free. They and, think and they can talk about everything. Our president in America right now is having difficulties. They are calling him scumbag. How dare anyone to use the word scumbag? In and call an American president. See, the trouble is we don't have respect for people in this world today in our country. Do they have? What would happen in your country oh. if you would call your president scumbag? Tell me. That person would be dead in the morning. I mean, he wouldn't even finish the interview. The, the whole set would be ramped Am I correct? The, the they don't realize Americans are so free, too free for me. You know, Pam, really. <laughs> it's upsetting, but you know, comedy. Well, you got the li you know, we're both we're all comedians. Right. Life is 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 fun, but when it's serious, like the president is in right now in this country, being to uh, be impeached, and he's impeached, and now he's got to leave office, it becomes very annoying to me. This country is using words like scumbag and idiot and things like that uh, to uh, call our president. There's no respect. Kids today should have a little respect for everyone. They gotta respect each other. And if you respect each other and respect yourself, that's the most important thing in life. You've got to be the president to me is the highest uh person the, in in the nation and, 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 and especially the president of the United States. I mean, just the president of any country. 
I feel is, is the guy that everybody should reserve mm -hmm. certain respect for certain areas you don't just into you, you don't go beyond the beyonds with him right he, right right he must he must uh, uh, command certain respect from people you know and in, in, like in my country if, if, I, if what has happened to President uh, Clinton it was happened it would never happen to a president where I come from by the way it wouldn't happen to any of these people in the world uh, uh, like uh, Americans how they take freedom to call on the phone on the television and call words like that it just upsets me but anyway, I, we're here to talk about comedy, yes. how Pam, yes. and about the high, the high, and Pam. Pam, tell me more about your comedy of uh, debutantes and your comedy, your act, and all your material. You write it all. Yes, I do. I write it all. And uh, actually, when I was a debutante, I wasn't presented to a fancy organization uh -huh. because my dad came from the north, so um, I was you know, I was sort of escorted to like sort of a you know blue collar sort of uh, debutante oh. is what I was. I was uh, presented to the Elks Lodge. The Elks Lodge. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I didn't have a crown on my head. I had antlers. And <laughs> every time I curtsied, I poked somebody in the eye. Uh huh. And uh, you know, I they were parading me around in front of the big crowd, and I looked like Bambi and Taffeta. It's <laughs> horrifying. Uh huh. I That's very funny. Yeah. That's cute. That's cute stuff. And you write all your own stuff. Yes. And it's based on. Do you what's sing? Do you on. dance? Do you do any of that? I do sing. Because you've got to do everything. You know, you've got to be very versatile here in Hollywood. I do. Because the competition so. Ooh, in so fact, I used to be in a band, and uh, I actually met a guy that I, I was dating who was also in the band. Uh -huh. and, um, actually, really wasn't a band, it was karaoke. But <laughs> 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 okay. That's good. That's actually, funny. that's how I got started in <coughs> comedy. Is I that how you really got started? Mm -hmm. Karaoke? Karaoke. Really? And it was at a comedy club. Uh huh. And the owner came up to me and he said, You know, you should get a routine together. And I said, Well, why? Do you think I'm funny? He goes, Well, you think you're funny. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. He was joking. Yeah. Because I used to talk to the crowd, and so that's how I started my first act. Uh huh. Well, uh -huh. hi. You sing, you dance, you do all that? Any yes, of Yes, I'm you a good singer and a dancer. And in fact, I moved from. Uh, from Africa straight to Seattle, Washington, where I've lived for the last uh, 18 years. I just moved 18 to Hollywood. 18 years? I've just moved to Hollywood You mean you've months. been in America 18 years? Yes. Lahai, you're sitting there dressed up in that outfit telling me you've been in Lahai 18 years, <laughs> But this is, this, this is what I, this, I, this is me. This is Lahai. You're Lahai. American, darn it. Oh, uh, well. I thought you were right from well, yesterday. But, 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 but Skippy, <laughs> in America, there's all ethnic city. I Every, understand. Everybody got to hold on to their roots, oh, you know. I, I agree with you. And I, I agree. I She's a New Orleans lady, and she wants to hold on to her southern roots. Right, darling? That's right. That's right. Go ahead. And, and, and so I, I'm, I'm still trying to, being a comedian now, now that I found comedy, so I, 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 I realize that you have to be different and continue to be different. And so that's why I still wear my African clothes. And, uh, I understand. And, and, I, and talking about the competition, being fierce, I mean, I'm also a good dancer. I, I used to have a band in Seattle called the African Roots. Oh, that's a good title. And I'm, 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 trying to yeah. start, I'm trying to start one here now. I think I met some African guys that I'm going to be playing with them in the band uh -huh. sooner or later. We're uh -huh. going to be playing the... You know, I would like to see an African uh, improv group. There's never would, been an African improv group. That's right. Total. I, I think yeah. I'm a, Wouldn't I'm it be interesting to have an improv group and bring it to the comedy store? I'm an start African that. one. I'm telling you. I'm going to start that. Very soon. interesting. There could be a great one to yes. get together. Yes, that's very that's different. That. Very cute and clever. Tell me about living in <coughs> Seattle from hot to cold. Oh, right. Seattle Give rains a, a lot. Break. <laughs> the Pacific mm -hmm. Northwest, the Great White Northwest is called. I love it. I love and it. And it's, it's just green. Have you and been very, there, Pam? Very no, beautiful. I haven't. Beautiful. America's beauty up yeah. in the Northwest. It's, it's incredible to, be, to, to, to have lived in Seattle. And that's why I started doing comedy. And, uh, really? You did it up there? Yes, I did my comedy in Seattle. At the Elks Club? <laughs> 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 yeah, there is, they have Elks Clubs for comics. They use Elks. <laughs> I used to work them years ago yeah. up there. Yeah. Up in uh, around yeah, no, my, my, Seattle, my home, my home comedy Washington. club in Seattle is called a Comedy on the Com Ground. Well, those are people that never been there when I was up there, <laughs> 35 years, 40 years so ago. So then I was never around no, then. No, and no. So, they had Elks clubs those days. But I different. heard about them from some other old comics. You know. Yeah, the old comics like me. <laughs> 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 like a guy called Lee McKay. We used to, we used to call him the Outlaw Comic, Lee McKay. Uh -huh. And he helped me out a lot, and some of the little comedians, Ride Long or James Stevens the Third, and they, I mean, there are a lot of comedians used to go up to Seattle and saw what I was doing, thought it was very funny, uh -huh. and kept uh, urging me on, come on, keep it up, keep How going. about San Francisco? I went to San Francisco also, but... A great uh, city. 
Yeah, it's a very, I very... I never really got into it, but it's a great city. It's Go a ahead. very nice city. I performed at uh, the... What's the name of that place? Battery, Washington, Washington Battery. Okay, go ahead. Uh, and and, and, and you know, Sacramento, I perform in Sacramento also. Uh -huh. And so, well, I've you know, I've been around a few other comedy clubs, but Seattle has given me the the start in comedy. Uh -huh. And uh, first time I went up, I, I I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, a guy saw me. Yeah. I was coming from somewhere in Seattle and asked me. I kicked his tires and told me to tell him a joke. And, <laughs> and I said, a woman at the age of 20, she's like Africa, semi-exploit. At the age of 30, she's like India, cool, warm, cool, and mysterious. Uh -huh. At the age of 40, she's like America, technically developed. At the age of 50, she's like Europe, all in the ruins. Mm -hmm. And at the age of 60, she's like Siberia, where everybody knows where she is, but nobody likes to go. And this uh -huh. guy thought this was very funny. Uh -huh. And I didn't know what I had said. I didn't think that was funny. Uh -huh. But he took me to a comedy club yet and still, and I kept doing comedy ever since then. How do you relax? And, and Playing tennis. I'm also a tennis you're player. You're a tennis player? Yes, I'm a tennis player. You have a player. son who is also a great tennis player. Yes, I've been teaching him how to play tennis since he was three years of age. So you've been playing tennis a long time. Yes, I've been playing tennis a very long time. And, uh, is that why you're so thin? I love your... your, your how much do you weigh, uh, Lachlan? I weigh about 125, 125. 25 points. That used to be my weight. Yeah. I love it. I I, when you close one eye, I bet you look like a needle. <laughs> <laughs> He's so thin. He's so thin. You're very thin, Lahai. And I'm a runner. Also. I, 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 I used to play a lot of sports, though. Keep shape, don't you? I do. I, I do. I have to keep up with my son now. now. Th those people there then your country, they love sports, don't they? A lot of sports. What's the favorite sport there? Soccer. Soccer? I, soccer. I play soccer professionally in America here for the Tacoma Stars. Uh -huh. Just for, for very briefly. But you're a horser. You, I, uh, you are a rider on horses. Absolutely. Tell me about riding those horses. Well, it's um, it's like having good posture all the time. <laughs> having good posture, yes, it yeah, really is. Good isn't posture, it? yeah. You do. That's really yeah, the way you sit. See, yeah, it was great. great. But you know, we didn't have. Uh, we used to have little parties, but uh, uh -huh. not many guys. So we had like uh, two kegs, three troughs. It was a real barn blower. Uh -huh. It's a little uh -huh. barn joke. Right. Are you very spiritual, <laughs> Lahai? You seem very, very you spiritual. You seem very spiritual. I'm very spiritual, but. Just, just, to, just to cut note back to the, ten, to the tennis thing, I think I have the next Adder Ash on my hands. I really, really Your son? Is, yes, I think if he were to listen, if he listens to me, he can go a long way in tennis. But talk about spirituality, I am very spiritual, knowing that I was raised in the boarding home school. Uh -huh. And now when I go to the comedy club around Hollywood, yes. Hollywood is so overwhelming that uh, I keep myself religiously based. Yes. That is, I watch a lot of TVN, Trinity Broadcast Network, and mm -hmm. God bless those people. They, 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 they help a lot of people mentally, spiritually, right, right. and it's, it's, good, it's good information that's being dispersed on that channel. And that's what I watch late night, other mm -hmm. than watching the comedy shows and David Letterman, which is one of my favorite, and even Jay Leno and uh, Bill Mayer. I watch all of them, but when I really want to feel my spirit, I go to TVN. Do you relax? Do you uh, do uh, by yoga?